Today's video is sponsored by Clean My Mac. Don't fall. Don't fall. Don't fall. Don't fall. All right. Jesus. Okay. Great. Okay. I'm just changing a few things or adding a few things to the desk setup at home. This one's a heavy duty boy. Well, actually this one here is a keyboard for the MacBook Air that's going into the condo desk setup. It's a bit complicated. My girlfriend stole my keyboard. Yeah. I don't even know why I'm talking to you guys about this. Look, all I know is that this is not going on my setup for my MacBook Air and I'm gonna be a happy camper. So new keyboard and mouse wrist for the Air. Pretty good. Let's go talk about it at the condo. Welcome to my one month review with the 15 inch MacBook Air. It's the laptop I've been using day in and day out ever since it came out. And there are so many things I wanna talk about, things I've experienced throughout my journey with it, recommendations I wanna make so you can get the most out of your money. Just simply deliver a well-rounded review as someone that's been using this for everything this past month. And that starts by not recommending the base model, MacBooks have been notorious for delivering great performance even with base specs. The thing is that coming from a 13 inch MacBook Air, I feel like this is not the biggest upgrade from it. Yes, it has the better speakers and the bigger screen, but in my honest opinion, if you want to make this laptop truly live by those upgrades, it all starts with spending that extra cash and getting the 16 gigabyte model. Why? It's simple. Those extra pixels that this liquid retina display pushes have to be taken advantage of. The way I've been doing so is by running a second iPhone emulator on my development project, which allows me to have more screen real estate to code, maybe have a second terminal open, in simple words, allow myself to use more processes that can be RAM intensive just so I can really allow myself to work with more screen real estate and achieve more. After all, this is a laptop that's meant for productivity freaks, developers, bookkeepers, designers, journalists, video calls with its 1080p webcam, heck, even some video editors like me. It's so capable, but you need to give it the right set of specs. At 16 gigabyte of RAM on my model, I've realized that my assembly process when it comes to video editing when I'm on the go is so smooth. Whether I'm filming in 4k 10-bit footage or a simple 1080p clip from my phone putting a quick timeline together on adobe premiere pro while i'm on the go has been amazing and i do have to say my one terabyte model with dual memory modules makes read and writing speeds a bit faster than my 13 inch air at 256 gigabytes with a single ssd module that definitely plays a role and makes memory swapping between the RAM and storage simply faster. And as a result, a smooth editing experience is something I am able to achieve when I'm away like when I went to Toronto for my Samsung foldable brief. I was able to get some work done at the airport with this laptop and I was a happy camper. For those who have no idea what I'm talking about, this workflow on an 8GB RAM module paired with a 256GB storage module is not easy to work with. Doable, but really it's not an easy workflow to enlarge and keep working within. An extra $400 for an extra 8GB of unified memory and a total of 512GB of SSD really is worth it in my opinion. The upgrade is worth it if you properly take advantage of your screen and your speakers, especially by using softwares to produce music or develop any sort of content. So yeah, this has been the laptop I've been bringing everywhere with me. Home, trips, the studio, I have it in the car with me at all times. When I went to Portugal, I really had zero issues fitting this in my carry-on. Whether I was in the airport, changing hotels, cities, traveling in the car, it almost felt like I didn't have a laptop with me. It's light, feels compact, it's super thin, it even comes with a 35 watt brick that's light and small. 
Heck, it even delivers dual USB-C ports for charging your laptop and maybe your iPhone. It's one of those laptops that you can easily whip out anywhere and start working with. The only downside with this that sort of negatively impacts its portability capabilities is the fact you always need some sort of dongle with you. In my everyday carry bag, I sort of have a dongle with me at all times. In Portugal, for example, when I was filming with the ZVE-1, if I wanted to import footage, I needed my dongle. In Toronto, if I wanted to edit, I needed my dongle. So as much as that extra 16 gigabyte of RAM will allow you to get more work done, keep in mind that with more power comes more responsibility, so the dongle is a must. It just gets annoying having to remember that I need to bring this places every time I travel with it. I don't know if you have realized by now, but my laptop already has some battle scars. I do have to say, definitely really, really annoyed. If I was to compare my 13-inch chassis with this one, the 13-inch, which I've had for longer and has suffered a lot more, is way cleaner. So now it makes me wonder, how well is this going to age? Will this suffer from distortions like the larger iPads once did? Is it because it's a bigger laptop that it allows for it to get scratched easily or did Apple using the same materials as the 13 inch causes some issues? I do think Midnight Blue is the color with the most noticeable scratches. I've got one scratch on the top lid and one on the trackpad and they just pop. It's the first time ever this happens to me in such a short period of time. I would love to hear whether or not other people have been going through the same issue, might just be me but I just found it really odd, not excited to see how the chassis and especially the ports will age on this. But I tried to keep it in good condition and that starts by getting some decent cleaning products and one of my favorite pieces of software, Clean My Mac. The latest version of Clean My Mac has just been given a significant update to it. This is the piece of software I use on all my MacBooks to make sure I'm immune to viruses. Every month, there are new attempts to attack macOS users with different sorts of malware, ransomware, and data stealers. Whether that's by injecting these through those sketchy email attachments you get, or by clicking on a link in Google search that downloads a PDF into your computers, it's important to not only keep your MacBook clean on the outside, but clean on the inside and that starts with their new moonlock engine it scans files up to two times faster than before and searches extra throttling in locations such as search email attachments external drives zip archives and even software launchers if you are like me and this is the laptop you take everywhere with you Moonlock Engine allows you to control how much battery and CPU power the scans take, so you can go make quick checkups of the most common locations without losing processing power, but if you want that full deep scan for better protection, let it take more battery and CPU power to make sure it looks in every single corner where viruses might be. I run clean my Mac weekly on my Apple computers to ensure things run smoothly, keep things in check and regain some memory by purging disk space. If you want to make sure you always get the most out of your MacBook, try clean my Mac and its new anti-malware capabilities by Moonlock Engine. With this, it's been easier to push my Mac. Now that I'm on my end, I've got the 16GB model, it's been a dream for myself, especially since I treat the Airs as my development machines, more specifically mobile development, which I am more often recommend to do with MacBook Pros, but maybe not so much anymore. Look, yes it's a fanless design although it really doesn't get as hot as the 13 inch and as thin as it is, I feel like the bigger chassis allows for air to circulate better. I can have this on my lap without a problem, my keyboard doesn't get insanely hot, I really do think that thermals are well maintained and taken care of within this machine. So no. Thermal throttle really hasn't been a thing for me at the moment. I think it's fair to say that out of all my intensive and demanding workflows, editing pictures and videos at the same time would make the temperatures rise a bit. But up to now, I haven't felt like the OS slows down the processor and reduces the performance to reduce heat generation. I haven't quantitatively measured thermal throttle because it's not something I feel like I've experienced. I'm not a fan of numbers, I like real world experiences and up to now, my experience hasn't shown any signs of performance degradation. Temps look good, clock speeds too, CPU GPU utilization looks great, heat dissipation feels just right. It's really nice and the fanless factor makes for things like shooting a voiceover or working in quiet environments insanely amazing, especially with this much power. 
I do need to say, the minute you demand more from it by connecting it to a full setup, it does start to get a bit hot. Let me paint you a picture of my setup though, a 4K monitor with a mouse and a keyboard connected through KVM, an audio interface with bookshelf speakers paired with an MV7 Sure mic and a webcam at the top of the monitor's bezel, all together connected to a dock that allows me to insert my SD cards and bang! That's my whole desk setup that the MacBook Air needs to handle. So yeah, let me tell you that of course it's going to get hotter. But for my workflow and my desk setup, that extra 16 gigabyte of RAM really does it for me, especially while I'm learning iOS development. On the other hand, things can sometimes get slow in Premiere or Lightroom while working on the 4K monitor. It happens that I need to edit my assemblies at a low output resolution while fixing some footage, but it's sort of rare. Everything else like surfing the web, using Notion, answering emails, Excel, VS Code, any web app really all feel smooth at all times and you won't notice performance degradation at all. As a whole, it's honestly an insanely great laptop to dock and work from home with, especially with the fact that you can use its 15 inch display as a second monitor. I mean, yes, it would have been nice to have dual monitor support off the bat, but you know what, with a second 15 inch display, I'm quite happy, especially when typing code on this Create Keeps Lemon Key 75 custom hot swappable mechanical keyboard. I know it was bound to happen, you guys were going to ask, but yes, this is my new keyboard because my girl stole mine. If you watch the videos, I'm slowly getting into keyboards and I'm trying to find some hidden gems. Hidden gems that allow you to easily work on them. Like this keyboard is easy to DIY, it's beginner friendly, it's hot swappable. I can customize my typing experience in a short period of time because I can get new switches and just put them on. I did get their fully assembled keyboard and not their bare bones version, I wanted something that that works out of the box and then eventually I will start playing with getting new stabilizers, swapping these Gatoron BB Raccoon switches, getting some GMK keycaps and so on. But yeah, before you ask me about this CNC aluminum body 75% layout board, I thought I would talk about it, maybe showcase it in a future video. It's definitely a different board but I know you're probably typing on this magic keyboard with Touch ID most of the time. I honestly love to write code on the go with these switches. The new generation of magic keyboards across all my devices have aged really well so I expect this to do the same. It's been great up to now, I don't think rocking this on your setup with the lid closed would damage it because of heat dissipation. The same goes with the trackpad which honestly just feels like exactly the same as my 13 inch Air and some freaking how slightly different compared to my 14 inch Pro which I don't know why, maybe cause it's smaller, I don't know. Recently I've been thinking that it might not be fair on my behalf to recommend the 14 inch Pro over the 15 inch Air just because upgrading the 15 inch Air might be moving you into that price range. Yes, if you upgrade the storage and the RAM, you're a few dollars away from a base model M2 Pro which is more capable but I can't deny the fact that some people still want to save $300, pay for portability, a slightly larger display and arguably a better resolution some might say. Actually, at their highest native resolutions, the resolution on the Air is higher than the 14 Pro. It sort of makes it easier for text viewing, but if you are a photographer or a video editor, I get it, the 14 inch Pro will definitely deliver a better image quality. But for most people out there that are looking for this laptop, they tend to work with lots of text, so I think that the 15 inch Air with 16GB of RAM and 512GB of SSD will definitely be the worthy spec for this laptop. And if you'd have to sacrifice one of these two upgrades, go with more RAM as the communication between memory modules will almost be negligible for most. These specs in my opinion will deliver an unbeatable 15 inch laptop, in fact the best daily laptop for those who don't mind and can work with macOS. My experience so far like in terms of battery life has been nothing but insane, especially when I was in Portugal and charged this a total of Actually, I charged this only once, considering I was watching Netflix on it, answering emails, taking care of my YouTube channel, uh, what else, splitting some small timelines, and even just editing or traveling pictures. Now that I think about it, for 10 days, that's actually insane. And compared to our previous Windows laptops, battery throttle is just not a thing. Whether you are plugged in or not plugged in, the performance delivery will be the same. I think as a whole, it's well packaged up, very well delivered. It's the laptop I've been 
been finding myself installing some extra productivity apps because I can take advantage of more screen real estate, it definitely has been an upgrade from the 13 inch Air I was rocking as a daily for the longest time. The set of specs are important and the fact that this, again, comes with a nice little portable charger with dual USB-C ports really puts an emphasis on portability and power wherever you go. This is overall the most complete laptop you can have at the moment with the right set of specs in my opinion. Is it worth it? Oh, totally, especially for those who want the bigger screen and that portable size. This device really doesn't feel like a 15 inch device. I was doing the math the other day and I think us Canadians and Europeans are torn about prices being so high for the base M2 Air, plus on top of the upgrades, you're touching M2 Pro territory. I know I already said it, it's not fair for me to compare both of these, but let me know your thoughts down below. What does the price difference look like in your country? Here in Canada, it's about 350 Canadian dollars, roughly 265 American dollars and 240 euros. Look, I hope sharing my experience with my 15 inch air helps you all make the right purchases. So I'm out. I will see you all next Sunday. Take care. <laughs>